A REST API call is like a Google search. You do a request and get a response back. The request is made by putting in a URL. Here we use this URL in this video. You can find the URL in the video description below. I strongly encourage you to do these exercises with me. You will learn 10 times faster. So we will use this URL for making the API call and the response we get back is in XML format. You'll see it here. These are, by the way, currencies from the Danish National Bank. So here you can see we have a root element in this XML file called exchange rates. We have a, a child element called daily rates, and that has an attribute with the ID uh, of a date. That is the date the currency data uh, are from. Then we have several child elements called currencies, and you can see each one of them has a code so we can refer to them. For example, let's say I want a British pound sterling, I can refer to the code called GBP. And then the L, I might want to get the attribute called rate. That one is over here. Let's see how we can do a REST API call and pass the XML afterwards. My name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some Microsoft Power Automate for desktop. So I go into my Microsoft Power Automate desktop flow. The first thing I want to do is to create a project folder for the entire project. So I right click on my desktop, say new folder. I will call this XML project like this. I also want to grab the path of this folder. To do so, I press shift in on my keyboard. I repeat shift in on your keyboard and then right click. You'll see the copy as path. It's, it only works when you press shift in. So copy as path. Go back to Power Automate for desktop. Let's create a variable for this path that is best practice in uh, RPA development and pa uh, Power Automate for desktop development. So we'll call it something. Let's just call it project path like this and press enter. Then the value, I can just press control V that will put in uh, this uh, path. Remember to move the double quotation mark in the end and in the start, you can click save. The clever thing now is that we can just refer to this path whenever we want to, or to this uh, variable whenever we want to use the path val value. That is clever because imagine that this project will get moved to a client's computer or a colleague's computer, then we can just easily change this variable. Now let's make, uh, let's create the API call. We'll do that by an invoke web service here, drag it in. Here we need the URL and that was the URL that we talked about is in the video description below. So control C, copy the URL in here and paste it in here. The method we're using that is get. We're getting something down, we're getting some data down. Uh, some other common methods that, are, that is post where we post things to, for example, a web server or we can delete things there. But we're using get. We also want to go down to save response. Now we are saving it into a variable. That's fine. We will save it into a file in a little while. The variables produced. We have web service response headers. That is headers of the, the response. Then we have the web, web service response. That will be our XML file. And then we have a status code indicating if it was a success or not. So I can click save here. Try to run the flow and you'll see that over here in web service uh, response. You can go in, uh, hover your mouse over here, double click. There you go. We now have our XML that we can work on. It looks a little bit weird and we will need to apply a technique to get the data out we want from this. But congratulations, you made your API call. What I want to do first is that I want to uh, go in here and instead of getting the text into a variable, click this drop down, save to disk. I also want to specify the full path. So click this little drop down, specify full path. Now I just give the full path where I want to save this XML to so I can work with it. The first part we already created up here, that was the project path. So click this uh, little X here and then click project path. Then you'll say uh, backward uh, slash and then we can say currency rates dot XML like this and I click save. So now we just save it to a file and when I run it, you'll see that, let me minimize this, 
we have it out here uh, in the project uh, folder, XML project, currency rates.xml. I can right click, then I can open with notepad. There you go. We have now saved the XML file to our uh, project folder. That was easy, wasn't it? Now we just need to pass these things out. And let me just move back to Power Automate for desktop. So we need to read this XML thing. So I find a read XML from file here and drag that one in. The file path, well, we just use the file path up here. So in order to make no mistakes at all, I just say save, that will give us an error. Fine, go into invoke web service and just copy this path here. You're welcome to write it, but I always recommend uh, copy pasting it will reduce the risk of errors. I don't uh, always remember it myself, but I try to do. So here, uh, control V paste in this, you can see that we, are, we have it read into a variable called XML uh, document, I can click Save. Now we can start working with the attributes that we want to get out that was the, for example, the bridge pound rate. So I go up here, then I'll say get XML uh, element attribute, I can uh, drag it in here. We're reading from the Excel XML document. That is fine. That was the one that we uh, created up here. Then we'll it'll say XPath query. XPath is very easy to learn, but I recommend spending a little bit of time on it. And let me show you what it is. So we can just uh, say we want to go to a specific part in the XML tree. So first we'll say I can refer to uh, this root element I can do that by having a, a forward slash. That means root elements start here. But we can also do a little bit, a little bit easier thing. I just want to get to a currency element. In that way, I'll have two forward slashes. So that means I'll start uh, in a child element. And here I'll just say currency like this. And then I just want to say I want to get a currency with the code British pound sterling. So oh, let me just copy here, control C and drag it in here. Here I need some hard bracket, then an F like you know in an email, control V, paste it in. Then uh, instead of these double quotation mark, make single quotation marks like this, and then a hard bracket end. So now we're saying we want uh, the currency element with the code GBP. That is uh, this element here. Then I want to say I want the attribute called rate. So I just copy this one here and paste it in here. Now we get the rate. Let's also uh, rename it. So it says XML attribute value rate like this. And then I can click Save. Now let's just see if we can get the British pound sterling rate, which is uh, we can either find it here or in the browser, which is 823.86 if it hasn't changed since we uh, ran it first. There you go, you can see it over here. 823.86. We have passed it. That's how easy it is to pass XML data. Similarly, we can get the date out. So I just drag this one in. And let's see how we can get date out. Now I just want to look in daily rates and the attribute called ID. So what I can do here is I can say I want a child element called daily rates, and the attribute called ID. I want to store it in XML attribute value date. And I do these things as best practice to rename my variables. Because in that way, it's very easy to see what's going on later on is just having random names. There you go, we have our names. Click the video up here to get the full power automate for desktop beginners course where I'll teach you all the best practices in Power Automate for desktop development. See you.